Hi, my name is Ken Hughes. I'm a customer experience strategist and actually I often describe myself as a social science Frankenstein. I'm made up of, of several parts. I'm fascinated by consumer behavior and how psychology and the psychology of the human mind impacts what we buy, how sociology and social norms impact consumer desire, how anthropology, the way we live our lives, cyber behaviorism, the way we live our digital lives and how they affect our real world interactions. And the one I want to talk about today, behavioral economics, the psychology of decision making, how all those things kind of interplay to basically understand the modern consumer today. Now today's video is about artificial intelligence and how the world of consumer purchasing and consumer decision making is going to fundamentally be changed forever by AI. But I want to look at it all through a lens of behavioral economics. So let me start by explaining the difference between AI and traditional economics. So my 17 year old son is currently studying economics in high school and he was looking at his consumer behavior chapter recently and he talked about, oh, he's, here are the assumptions that are made to make standard economic theory work. And one of the assumptions is that the, the consumers will behave rationally, that consumers will do what we expect them to do. And of course, it's an assumption that has to be made for standard economics because otherwise the models wouldn't work. But the reality is that consumers are wholly irrational. Behavioral economics looks at the psychology of decision making and it's a fascinating space because humans are bonkers. <laughs> humans don't make rational decisions. They make very irrational decisions based on how they buy, where they buy, when they'll buy, what they'll buy. In fact, look at this. This is the latest trend in China. These are fake belly button temporary tattoos <laughs> that you fix a couple of inches above your navel and apparently by putting it above your navel and hiding your original belly button it makes you look taller, makes your legs look longer. This is the current trend in China. So you're trying to tell me that humans are rational, normal people? Absolutely not. And so why am I looking at behavioral economics? Well, people are fascinated by AI at the moment and all the conversations around AI and people are terrified that AI is going to steal society, it's going to take over humanity. And well, I mean, that's a bit futuristic, it's a bit science fiction, it's a bit Terminator Skynet, but it will change how people buy and here's why. Making decisions is difficult. As consumers, we actually don't like making decisions. And the brain that we have, we would rather be doing other things than trying to go through all the effort of making decisions. Woody Allen once said that his brain was his second most favorite organ of his body. And so it is a fascinating piece of kit. But ultimately, we don't like using it for making decisions. The easier we can make a decision, the faster we want to move on. And so in consumer decision making, this is the model that we have been using for, for decades. And this is the one we teach in universities still. It's a very simple model. It basically takes it from information, from the beginning of a problem. I have a problem. I have, therefore have a need of a product or service to match my problem. Um, and so if you want, you know, your problem might be you want a handbag. Now, functionally, all you need is a bag. But actually, somehow that translates into then I want a Gucci bag. I want a Gucci bag because it's not really about the function is it the problem I'm trying to solve is about peer status in society and that's why you get luxury brands and so the problem is can be all sorts of things they can be emotive they can be belonging they can be all around Maslow's hierarchy of needs but ultimately you start with the problem what is the problem I have how do I want to solve this problem well I'm going to look for products and services that match my needs and wants yeah, and therefore I'm going to have a whole load of alternatives to search through. I'm going to have an information search phase, I'm going to have an evaluation, evaluating all the alternatives phase. Then eventually you make a decision, you make a purchase decision, and then afterwards you maybe have a bit of post-purchase dissonance or post-purchase examination as to well, did the product meet my needs. Now that five-stage model is a very simple model, uh, and it's again a very linear model, um, but the stage two and three there, the evaluation of alternatives, the looking, searching for products that meet the needs, that takes a lot of effort. And even for low involvement products, let's say coffee, a lot of brand owners misunderstand people who buy their product regularly. They think they're loyal customers. Oh, this guy, he buys my coffee every two weeks in the supermarket, he's a loyal customer. No, that guy might just be not wanting to go through all the effort of looking at all the alternatives, looking at the shelves and thinking, well, which brand will I buy today? What richness of coffee do I want? What format do I want? What's the weight? What are the price? What's on promotion? All that takes so much effort in your mind that what you actually end up doing is buying the same brand you bought last time because that was fine, you liked it, and you shortcut the process by not looking at all the alternatives, by not doing the search. And that's what a lot, we use branding a lot to shortcut that process. It doesn't necessarily mean that the customer is loyal to you. But that takes a lot of effort. And, and the, the famous one that we always use is, is men, particularly in the health and beauty aisle, in a drugstore or in a supermarket. You walk in, there's 400 bottles of shampoo. Most men don't really care what they use in the shower. Uh, you know, if they could find a bottle that says, this is shower gel, shampoo, conditioner, 
shaving gel and you can also eat it for protein, they'd be quite happy. Honestly, they'd buy that same product again and again. They don't want to look at 400 options. There's a very famous book by a guy called Barry Schultz called The Paradox of Choice. And in it, he states very simply that the more product choices you have, the bigger the range, the harder it is to make a decision. And therefore, the paradox is you walk away, you don't make a decision. And actually, some marketeers even use this against us as consumers. They make their the contrasting options very overly complicated on purpose hoping that you just get sick of it and make a decision so if you ever try and buy insurance products health insurance or car insurance or broadband deals or cell phone deals all the various options are so confusing that you often think oh i'll just take this one and what they're doing is they're trying to wear you down with overly complicated options in the hope that you just buy something and so the same thing you'd have experienced this on netflix when you open netflix or amazon prime and you know look at this chart i think it's true of most of us most of us spend most of our time looking for a movie as opposed to watching the actual movie uh, and so the, all that range of all those movies you could possibly watch you actually get paralyzed by choice uh, and so for behavioral economists what we want to do is we want to help you make that choice as a if i have a brand i want you to make the choice i want you to buy my product we have to make it easy now what's about to happen is that ai is going to step into this space instead of us doing all the effort instead of us making all the effort trying to make the decisions the ai assistant is going to do all that for us so you don't have to look at the 400 bottles of shampoo it knows what you like it knows what you use it knows your skin type it knows your hair type it knows all about you so it'll just buy you the one that you like and sometimes it'll change it for a promoted item to save you a bit of money or but it'll know your preferences and it'll learn them so well and i think what people are a bit scared of the trust issue always comes up when i talk about ai assistance they think well how can you have an assistant who's going to be doing all the purchasing for you for everything? That's a bit dangerous, isn't it? How will you trust the system? And we're going to inherently trust the system because I'll be honest, the genie is kind of out of the bottle already on that. The algorithms that we already have. I mean, look at LinkedIn. It tells you where you should work. Facebook, Instagram tells you who you should be friends with. Tinder tells you who to love. Uh, Netflix tells you what to watch. Spotify tells you what to listen to. Amazon tells you what to buy. The algorithms are already in, in the background running your life. You just don't really realize it. But those algorithms are really kind of version 1.0 they're quite basic you know people who bought this might might you might like this and it's kind of trying to predict maybe what you might like but imagine a version which i've seen behind the curtain already in terms of ai that's coming your way that's deeply personal so imagine your ai assistant is firstly it's a deep fake it's a video deep fake and your interaction will only ever be with voice so this is, becomes your friend and it does everything for you and it says, hey, Ken, your broadband 12-month contract is coming to an end tomorrow. I mean, you would never have remembered that, but it does. And it says, I've looked at some options for you. I found a cheaper deal based on the last three months data that you've used in your house. This is a better deal for you. It'll save you, you know, $80 a year. Uh, do you want me to change it? And you say, yeah, yeah, of course, go for it. And you give it the vocal authorization to do that. And it does all the paperwork and the admin and done. And then, of course, a couple of months later, it does your car insurance, your health insurance, your, your pension management. It does your, your broadband deal, your cell phone deals. It does everything. And then you start to say, well, do my groceries, do my meal planning, make me a healthy, nutritious, low carb, high protein meal plan for this week, please. And buy all the groceries that you need for it. So it does the meal plan, does the ingredients, it knows you. And as it does each piece, each decision, it learns a little bit more about you. And these are deeply learning models. That's the difference between the previous algorithms and the future that's coming. It learns everything all the time. It stacks it on top and it gets better and better and better. And eventually this assistant is going to know you as well as you know yourself. And it's going to buy things for you. And imagine that grocery delivery, it knows your schedule so it's ordered those online deliveries it's going to come on thursday at five o'clock because it knows you're home at 4 30 but you're stuck in traffic at 4 45 it sees it so it automatically lets the door the digital door open for the delivery man when he does arrive because it knows you're only three minutes around the corner in your car and, you know this is the it's kind of a, a creepy future maybe but actually we're all going to lean in very heavily to this future because it makes it so convenient for us it's so instant it's easy everything is easy and what does this mean? It means that then you give it your holidays and your flights and your hotels. And it'll give, it'll, you give it everything because you don't want to make the effort of doing all the comparing. It'll do it all for you. And so it's a future that basically takes the human out of the consumer decision-making process. So search for alternatives, evaluate the alternatives. It's all going to be done by the AI, but it's going to be done in a deeply personal way. And again, people think, oh, the trust, I'm not too sure. Will we ever trust the machines? But you see, if you look at this graph, this shows you what people are using AI for in 2023. And you can see the majority of it is, is 65% there is general assistance. That's going to be the domination. But look at the second one, the companion AI. That's the interesting part. And if you look at this chart, this chart shows you the growth of companion. Look at the growth in the last year of the amount of people using AI for companion. And if you look, talk about the top three AI apps that consumers are using at the moment, it's ChatGPT, Bard, which is Google's AI, and Character AI. 
And most people don't know what that is. Most people don't know what character AI is when I talk in my speeches. And basically, it is a companion. You can talk to someone fictional, like um, a historical figure like Leonardo da Vinci. You can talk, talk to Billie Eilish. Not her herself, obviously, an AI version. You can talk to a character that you make up yourself. You can have conversations. And as the learning gets better and as the natural language progresses, these are very companionship-based. And people are enjoying this. That is the future. Your AI assistant is going to be such a companion to you. It's going to talk to you in a way that you like. If you like humor, it'll use humor. If, you know, so these are amazing future that we're about to step into. What does it mean, of course, for brands, marketeers, and CX practitioners? That's why you're listening to this talk. What it means, quite simply, is that the game is going to change. Brands have to be genuine. They have to be real, authentic, really locked into their why. Because you're not going to be able to compete on price and, and attributes anymore because the AI machine can cut through all of that. It also means that we have to have zero tolerance for friction. We, we are going to expect as consumers, everything's going to be so easy. Seamless, frictionless, easy. Buying things is going to be so easy for us. So anytime we interact with any brand or product or service that is a bit gritty, that's not great, we will have zero tolerance for that. So the expectations around customer service and customer experience are going to ratchet up, I would say, tenfold in the next two to three years because of what we're going to experience with AI. So it's a fascinating future. Hope you learned something. And if nothing else, today you've learned that you can go online and buy a fake belly button, stick it on, and be two or three inches taller. What a great finding. Until next time, I'm Ken Hughes.